Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 438 for Casual Friday, April 7th, 2023. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain. Welcome back to Business Brain, the show where we take our business brains and apply them to all kinds of circumstances in our lives because we find that we're more efficient when we can apply our business brains to anything business wise, personal wise, otherwise sponsors for this episode include factor at factormeals.com slash brain 50, where you use code brain 50 to get 50% off your first box of America's ready to eat meal kit, two minutes and they're ready. We'll talk more about that in a minute, as well as Thinkific Plus, where you get one month of Thinkific Plus for free at thinkific.com slash business brain. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here, somewhere else on the interwebs, <laughs> in the world of AI on Casual Friday, this is Shannon Jean. <laughs> it is the world of AI today. I have something to yeah. say if this okay. is not a casual thought. If you are not yet using AI for your life, for your business. If you haven't played with chat GPT, I, like I, I'm, I'm rarely going to say what I'm about to say, pause this episode and go, or while you're listening, sign up for the account at chat GPT and go, we've got links in the show notes for all this stuff. And the reason I say this, I, 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 I and you know, telling you to pause the show, that's really kind of bad for business here, but it's good for you you need to learn how to use AI. Let me, yep. let me say this. We've all, over the years, developed what is regarded in nerd circles as Google Foo, right? The, 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 a twist on Kung Fu. The idea of we've developed each, developed some skill at creating and crafting the right search query to get the right search results, right? We've all got our, we've all done that. We have a lot of experience with it. Some of us are better than others, of course. But when search engines first came out, this was not a given, right? In fact, people yeah, were exactly. selling their services to craft you a query so that you could find the thing you wanted to find for your business. This literally happened. I never did it, but I've watched other cottage businesses do this. I, well, I think you could, there are still a, probably a, a large swath of, of the population that doesn't grasp the most effective way to create that search query. I, I agree with that yeah. uh, for sure. Yeah. Some of us are better than others. All of us for, for, for all of us, that skill is becoming irrelevant. What is happening is we need to develop skill, AI foo, if you will, chat GPT foo, if you want to brand it somehow with creating prompts. So we've got queries for search engines, prompts for AI, and the two are very, very different because there's a level of, if you're too limited with a Google search query or an any search engine query, you won't get the results you want. But if you're too verbose with it, you'll wind up getting results for everything. And yeah, we can use quotes in a search query and like, you know, narrow it down to things. And, and those are good skills to have today. A year from now, I posit that they will be worthless uh, or worth less yes. because we need to craft AI queries with these chatbots that exist. And what I'm finding as I am trying and failing and experimenting and learning is the more verbose I am, the better off. The more descriptive I can be, the better off I am. And, and we'll talk about some examples in a little bit, but I'm finding what's great about these generative and transformative, G and T and GPT, uh, chatbots, is that you can transform the results you get by giving it a follow-up query. So if you weren't, specific enough in your first one, no worries. Just say, Hey, rewrite that with X. And we're going to talk about some examples, but I, that that's my feeling on this. What are, what are your feelings on this, Shannon? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, w you, you don't know what you don't know. 
And your point about learning these prompts and you may have a business, it doesn't matter whether you're in the service business, if you run a plumbing, you know, business or you're an accountant or an attorney or a landscape construction, but whatever, there are ways to integrate AI into your business, whether it's on your website, whether it's creating content for you to put on flyers. I mean, you, you don't know what you don't know. And the only way to learn is to start and to experiment. And if, and if you're not the one to do it, somebody in your organization should be learning about how to do this. Ooh, that means I get to tell you about our sponsor. And hey, look, this spring you need nutritious, convenient meals to energize you for warmer, active days and keep you on track reaching your goals. Factor, our sponsor, and America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, and you'll tackle everything on your to-do list, making it into your to-did list. Because with Factor, you get to skip the trip to the grocery store and also skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, too. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy and then get back outside and soak up the warmer weather. Lisa and I had some Factor meals the other night. We had to move a hinge on our refrigerator. It was a big fiasco. It took us like two hours. We thought it was going to take 30 minutes. It was super nice to have those Factor meals ready in literally two minutes. And they're delicious. They have meals and menus to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus. You can cut back on takeout and get Factor instead. Head to factormeals.com slash brain50 and use code brain50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code brain50, B-R-A-I-N-5-0 at factormeals.com slash brain50 to get 50% off your first box. And our thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Listen, your business is growing and customers love what you're doing. And to keep them coming back, you need to engage them at every level. And that's where our sponsor, Thinkific Plus, is essential. Thinkific Plus provides businesses like all of ours with a powerful, easy-to-use educational platform that keeps our customers, vendors, partners, and employees informed and trained. And informed and trained people keep coming back, right? So many businesses and organizations rely on Thinkific Plus today, like Hootsuite, for example, right? One of the world's most widely used social media management platforms. They use Thinkific Plus to host their online training site, Hootsuite Academy, with online courses on social media marketing and platform training. And since launching with Thinkific Plus, they've trained and certified nearly half a million of their customers in social media marketing. And because of that, their academy has allowed them to build long-term relationships with their customers, reduce churn, and increase the number of customers who become active brand advocates. When your customers win, your business wins too. I know your business and customers can benefit from Thinkific Plus as well. Start educating your customers at scale. And right now, because you're a listener of Business Brain, you get a free month of Thinkific Plus when you go to our special URL, thinkific.com slash businessbrain. Get your free month of Thinkific Plus at thinkific.com slash businessbrain. And our thanks to Thinkific Plus for sponsoring this episode. All right. So let's share some examples of what, where we have had some success and maybe even some yeah. failures, Shannon. Hey, I've been, I, I, I've been eating those factor meals for the last few days oh. and I have to say they're terrific. Dude, I, I, I they're had the awesome. chicken queso for lunch today. It was awesome. Love it. <laughs> anyway. Oh no, they're yeah, great. great. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So Back to the, 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 the AI, the AI thing. So, I've been doing the Mac Geek Gab podcast for almost 18 years, right? Okay. And, and so I know that I'm stuck in my ways with that. It, it's just a, because the human brain is perfect at finding shortcuts and just developing habits and then you stick with them. And so I know that I need to write better show notes. Specifically, the blog post part of my show notes needs to be longer. I always write like a short little paragraph and I'm like, great, check the box, moving on. Got lots of listeners. Really, we're successful, but we're not doing anything for SEO with a short little, you know, 40 word right. blog post, right? Yeah. So what I did was I took the agenda of the show, uh, which just lists the person's name, 
who sent in a quite we were a Q&A show person's name who sent in the question and my written description one liner of their topic. Right. So that as I'm looking, as I'm creating the agenda and as we're doing the show, I know what's coming next. So I fed that in to chat GPT and I said, write a short blog post describing how Dave, John and pilot Pete, the hosts of the show did a podcast episode with the following agenda. And then I just pasted it in and I clicked go. And it wrote me a six paragraph thing. In the latest episode of Mac Geek Gab, figured out that it was Mac Geek Gab, by the way, our three favorite geeks, Dave, John, and Pilot Pete, delivered an exciting and informative podcast that touched on a variety of topics. From quick tips to detailed discussions, episode 975 is packed with valuable information for Mac enthusiasts. The podcast started with, and it, it on it goes. I was like, this is friggin' amazing. Yeah, brilliant. And I, brilliant. I read through it, and I had a couple of things that I would change and did change to match my voice and style and... It doesn't know that we say don't get caught if, at the end of every episode, although my guess is at some point it'll figure that out, too. And and so, you know, I I I put things I there are some sort of branded phrases that it rephrased and I, I changed those, but that's fine. And and that became the post, but that's not the end of it. Then I said, that's great. Please distill that down into a 120 to 160 character SEO friendly meta description. And it wrote a pretty generic meta description. And I said, that's fine, but please rephrase that meta description to remove the mention of the name of the, the show, Mac Geek Gab, and also remove mentions of the host names, focusing instead on a few of the topics covered. And it said, Explore Apple tips and tricks, Safari currency conversion, finder shortcuts, Siri, and more. Dive into cool tech finds and enhance your Mac experience. I, like That's amazing. And this all took me, you know, a few minutes. Yeah. So that content creation aspect of things based on something you've already created. Yes. Maybe you have tips and things on your website that you could, you know, uh, give use those prompts to ha have an AI write something or you know new and updated, or you could even customer report. service take your FAQ, feed Correct. it in, and create Correct. more FAQs, right? Yep. Or your knowledge yep. base and create answers to questions. Yep. So I've been using Chat GPT in uh, to write an article about a topic we've discussed, and I've put those. If you get the business brain newsletter, which yep. you should sign up for at uh, businessbrain.show, you'll see those articles below our show notes and the chapter and all that stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, that's great. I, I think that's fantastic. Um, but now we're using, just starting to get familiar with a new tool called Swell AI that's really for, uh, kind of focused on podcasts. And it goes way, way beyond uh, specifically you know, what we can do all to the point of creating an ask me anything, a query based on the transcript of your podcast, where somebody can ask a natural language question about, you know, uh, something we talked about and it will come back and, and give them the answer based on the transcript. It's uh, crazy. It's, it, I, yeah. It, yeah. It's well, I think an important thing for all of us to remember is that these are large language models, right? LLM. They're a chat based AI engine that ingests and processes this large language model, which means lots and lots of content. And then based on its knowledge of that content, and I'm using knowledge with air quotes, sort of, but based on its knowledge of that content, it then gives you answers. So chat GPT's lar if you go to open AI, you know, dot, I think it's dot com, I, I think. Uh, yeah, openai.com, which is where chat GPT is that engine, that large language model is fed with most of the information from the internet at large up through some point in 2021, meaning it is not current. So if you want to do what we all did and probably still do with Google and do what I call ego searches or topic searches where it's like, tell me who Dave Hamilton is. Tell me who Shannon Jean is. Tell me about Business Brain. It wouldn't know about Business Brain because we changed the name of this show in 2022, right? So it's not going to know about that. But it does have this rich history of 
everything up until about two years ago that it can use if you feed it with your other stuff. So I fed it with our agenda for the show. Sometimes you could feed it with like a little transcript or something to give it context for the, for it to then regurgitate or process that. If you want to do those ego searches or do something with chat GPT, but based on current data, you can do that because Microsoft's Bing AI is chat GPT four, which is the very latest engine that you only get if you pay for it. But with Bing, you don't have to pay yet. At least uh, you get GPT four plus Bing's current search database, meaning it's based on the yeah. internet at large. I've done ego searches in both and, and you know, it's like, write a bio for Dave Hamilton, the podcaster again, being specific enough to narrow it down so that they're not getting Dave Hamilton, the baseball player, Dave Hamilton, the, the, the guitar player, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I say, write a bio for Dave Hamilton, the podcaster chat GBT got it wrong. I mean, some parts were right. Some parts were wrong. Like it said, you know, graduated from uh, Santa Cruz or, you, you know, you, you see Santa Cruz. Sure. I didn't ever go to UC Santa Cruz. I didn't graduate from anywhere. Uh, but when I asked Bing AI, tell me about Dave Hamilton, the bod podcaster, it got it right. Like it was, it was all, but it was a little bit safer with its data because it has current data. It's, it, it, we need to know how these things are built to be used to use them effectively. And, and that's part of the key here, but. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. you, we all need to learn how to use We all we need, need to, to make mistakes I don't just mean it. you. I yeah. mean, yeah. all of us. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think we were talking before the show. I know there's, uh, you know, fear out there towards, you know, this AI and what's going to happen with all these jobs and different things. And, you know, it, it, the one thing I'll say about at least like the job market is when you eliminate large parts of employment, let's say, a tool takes it over. Usually those people learn to do something else and we create entirely new industries yes. based on that, if you look at history. So it's not always a negative. No, it's um, it's rarely is it a negative. It's a short-term neg negative. It is yeah, a negative yeah. in the short adjust. term. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like uh, I've used, I've used chat GPT to write code for me, uh, PHP yeah. code, you know, for a website and it, the code that it writes is solid. There is a, a thing now called GitHub Copilot, GitHub being a code management uh, repository management tool where you'd have all your code there. Copilot will write you code for your repo and it uses your existing code that you have to seed the engine so that when it's writing new stuff, it's doing it based on what you already have using variable names and function names and leveraging what you've already written and I've, I've, I, I work with a programmer on another team. He just had it right. Like a thousand lines of code for him to save him a ton of time to get yeah. a framework together. It's amazing. It yeah. I, I mean, think about, you know, I used to talk a lot about a, a service called help scout, which really yeah. dramatically improved the customer service experience for my customers. Uh, and you know, we would create knowledge bases and do all these kinds of things. But think about it happening automatically where your customers' queries are automatically turned into a knowledge-based entry and data put together to answer those questions. So the next time you got that query, it would automatically be answered and, you know, that much faster. Um, it, it really can increase your productivity. And and the key here, and this is why we're doing this on Casual Friday, is to just get you to experiment with it. Play, to, make to, mistakes. Yeah, play around with it. Um, you know, talk to your kids. How are they using it at school or what's going on? And, and go up and put prompts in there and just see what happens and come back and tell us. And if you're not using AI, come tell us why. Business yeah. brain feedback at business brain dust show. Again, feedback at business business boy, easy for you to say. Feedback at businessbrain.show. And if your email's featured in an episode, uh, you are entered to win a MacBook Air this year. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for checking out our sponsors, factormeals.com slash brain fifty, thinkific.com slash business brain. Keep living that charmed life, huh? We'll see you next week.